All right guys, we're back in with another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do network firewall rules made easy. And this is gonna be one of my easiest videos yet. It's gonna get you down and dirty and get right into it. So let's watch that intro. <laughs> All right guys, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, I'm on network 8.6.9 on Unify Network. Uh, once you've already created it all and set up your network, this, I'm not, this isn't a network tutorial, this is just firewall rules. So I have all the VLANs that I've created right here. So I have VLAN one, two, three, and four. So just have those written down and have the names of like, this is default, IOT, this is this person, and this is guest. So just have those networks and the names is written to them so you know where they are on a piece of paper, on your computer or on a file somewhere or just somewhere so you can look at it quick while we create these rules. Next is we're gonna wanna go to profiles and IP groups. And as you can see, the first one, why we got those, all those VLAN IDs is we need to go to block UDM and we're gonna make it called block UDM and we're gonna have those IP addresses in there, but add a one to it. So if it's uh, your default, depending on what it is, you're gonna add a one to it or add a one to it. Cause this is basically saying that we don't want any of these VLANs that we set the firewall once we do to be able to access the UDM interface. We don't want it to be able to go to it. We don't want it to go to the router at all. We don't want it to have access at all. And every time you create a VLAN, it gives another way where they can kind of go into it through the different VLAN of, cause like each VLAN, like here's the default, as in the default network is 1.1 .1 to get on the, the router. Well, to get on the router on 192.168.2, which is the IOT, it's 2.1. But if you're on a different VLAN, let's say you're on the IOT network, if you were to type in 192.168.1.1, you could ping the router. If you wanted to go to 192.168.3.1, you could ping the router. So when we set our firewall rules, we need to block it and make sure it doesn't have access to any of them, none of them. So every time you add a new VLAN, just come here and add that new VLAN name, uh, IP address range with that one in front of it, depending on what your IP address range is and it'll automatically apply to all the firewall rules we create later. So you won't have to keep, oh, I have to do this, then I have to go back and edit the firewall rule. Nope, once we create the firewall rule, after I show you all these uh, IP groups, then all you gotta do is just add more stuff to these and they'll automatically be reflected on the firewall rules. It's freaking awesome. So basically this is just saying, nobody has access of what networks we give this to block all the UDM access to our UDM router or whatever router you're using from Unify. Next, we're gonna wanna create block to HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH. And we're gonna wanna set these, these are the ports right here. So we're gonna change this to ports, port groups, and then you're gonna add the ports in here. These are the ports, copy them, it doesn't matter. These are the network ports, this is the mainstream network ports that all Mostly all routers use these ports. So these are the ones that we're gonna to wanna to put down here to block so people can't SSH and all that stuff into the router. So it's very important so we can set our networks to not be able to have any access to our router at all. We're just going balls to the walls here and make sure, hey, you ain't getting on this router unless we give you access to it. So you're gonna to wanna to add these in and just call it block to HTTP, HTTPS and SSH. Next one, we're gonna go to RFC 1918, we're gonna create. And this is basically, that's gonna block all the VLANs from talking to each other. This is basically blocking inner VLAN routing. So this is gonna have it where none of the VLANs can talk to each other. So you're gonna wanna put this in here. As I said again, just like the ports before, doesn't matter what your network creation is, put these in here, it doesn't matter what IP, uh, uh, protocol you're using, this will work as long as it's on IPv6. IPv6, it will not work, but this is IP4, so yeah, rock this in. This is gonna stop inner VLAN routing. Then next, after we've done this, we're gonna create firewall rules, that easy. So the next one, we're gonna go here, general, we're gonna go to security, general, we're gonna go to oh, traffic and rules, and we're gonna hit advanced. It might be on simple by default, we're gonna go to advanced. So if we go down here, 
as you can see, they're all labeled on different. There's the guest. They do have a guest network because we get the little check mark uh, to give guest portal and all that stuff. So some of these rules you might want to do here if you have a guest network, as you can see here, block guest to UDM. So you would go create new rule. We would do it guest local because the console is local and we want to name block guest to UDM. We would want to go to drop because we want to drop them not having any access to what we selected, those rules that we created. So if we did allow, it would allow them to all the stuff. We're saying drop to say, heck no, get out of here. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, guest network. So you would go to your networks, select the guest because this is guest to local and this is the guest network we want to drop. And then over here, all you put is block UDM and then block HTTPS right under here, the port groups we had. So block to UDM is which that group that we created down below over there uh, in the port profiles. And then this other one we created in port profiles. So we blocked SSH. And then all you gotta do is hit apply down here and then boom, Bob's your uncle, that rule's done. And since there's only one rule in the guest, that's just the way it is for now. You could add more later, but you don't really need to. If, uh, unless you wanna add more stuff. But for this clean install, this is just a quick one. And um, by the end of this, I'll also show you how to be able to add devices to, through the firewall rules to other networks. So it'll be pretty cool. So you can allow all my printer to guest or this to guest. But hey, if you guys like these videos, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you guys don't miss any of my videos. All right, so now, we're gonna go to all. The reason I did guest first instead of going to all is I didn't want to forget it. And I can't, some people can forget it if they don't remember it in their head. I will hit all. And uh, our first rule we're gonna create is we're gonna allow established and related. So allow established and related, and this is very important. So this only allows saying, hey, we're only gonna allow traffic that we've uh, allowed to establish to the rules that we've created. And if we don't like what it's doing, it's just gonna not allow it through and that'll be the next rule after so this is basically saying allow the stuff that we want and then the other rule after this that we'll create will be drop in valid state and that'll be don't allow stuff that's not allowed so we're going to want to put lan in this just helps make your network run smoother too it's going to be a lan in allow established and related except you're going to leave all this to any 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 and then down at the bottom here we're gonna, it's gonna be on auto. We're gonna wanna select this to manual and put established and related. And then that's it, hit save, and boom, Bob's your uncle. And that's gonna go back in our rules. And with this one too, you wanna have the allow established and related, the first rule before any other allow stuff, because you can move these rules around. See how there's one underneath allow default to all VLANs? You just wanna make sure that no matter what, this one is always your top allow rule on whatever network uh, you're doing and stuff like that. It's very important and it just helps make everything run smoother. Next, what we're gonna do, because I wanna do it anyways, is drop invalid state, so what I was telling you about. And this, we're gonna wanna put LAN in, drop invalid state, and this one's gonna be drop. And we're gonna go down to any, any again, and then under auto, when we click off auto manual, we're gonna hit invalid and hit add. And that's all we're gonna do. And then now, drop in valid state should be the first drop. So after all your allow rules, drop should be the first drop before all your other drop rules too. So drop in valid state should be boom. So it should be allow of established and related, all your allow rules, the different VLANs or whatever on that LAN. And then the next one will be before any of the drop rules, it'll be drop in valid state. Next one we're gonna do is we're gonna go to block inner VLAN routing. So we don't want them to talk to each other. This is what I'm saying. This is gonna block where VLANs cannot talk to each other. So you won't be able to, unless you have a rule to allow, you will not be able to access stuff on the other VLANs once this rule is put into motion. So basically what we're gonna do is put LAN in, block inner VLAN routing. We're gonna have this drop. And then all you're gonna do here is we're gonna do um, port group, and we're gonna do that RFC 198 we did in profile rules. So RFC 198 you can hear, and RFC 1980 here, and drop, and boom, that's it, you're done. That rule is done now. The next one is if it's an optional rule. So this doesn't have to be, some people don't need it, some people do. This is uh, allow default to all VLANs. 
So you don't have to have this, but if you pause this, then you're not gonna be able, if you have stuff on your IoT network, like you can access stuff through IoT network, but IoT network can't access stuff on the default network. So that's what's pretty cool. So if you have like, oh, I have my streaming or my casting stuff on my IoT network, well, I'd want allow default to all VLANs, so my phones or my devices or whatever's on the default can still throw stuff and do stuff to it, but they can't come back. But if you're like, hey, nah, I don't need that. I just want them to be separated. I'm never going to have that kind of features available. I don't care. Well, then you don't have to make this rule. But we're going to make it anyways. Allow default to all VLANs. So all we're going to do is LAN in, allow default to all VLANs, and we're going to put accept. And the network's going to be, because we're going to select our network, and we want it to be the default. And then over here, we're going to go to RFC 1918. It's the same rule basically for the uh, inter VLAN routing basically, except we're setting a network on the top port because we're saying we want this network to be able to access all of them. Remember how we did before? It was all the, the network protocols being blocked by all the network protocols basically saying, hey, all these IP address ranges are not allowed to talk to each other, but in this one we're saying default is allowed to talk to each other. So we're gonna hit add, and then as you go here, Sorry if I'm not using the actual terminology. I'm trying to say this so normal people can understand it just really easily and stuff like that. So now here, allow default to all VLANs. I want this one, obviously, it's gonna be by default down here when you create it. I don't want it there. I'm gonna want this above the drop and above block VLANs because if it's down here, then it's not gonna work because the block rule is above the allow rule. It's not gonna work then. So what I need to do is bring this up here and now it's gonna allow it before it drops it. So it's gonna allow me to go through those networks if it was below. So you gotta make sure when you create these that they're in the order I said. Remember, it's allow, established and related. All oh, you're allowed to this, allow to that, whatever you wanna do. And then the first drop rule before all your drop rules should be drop in valid state. Now, depending on your network, some networks don't have drop in valid state, don't have allow, established and related, most 99% of networks, it benefits them, but for some, you know, there's weird networks out there, but hey, a noob is not gonna be doing those anyway, so. Okay, next thing, we're gonna say, well, hey, what happens if I want a printer on my network? And you're like, hmm, a printer on your network, that is true. Well, here, I'll show you. Let's just go, let's just pretend this TV is 2147, two, okay. So all we gotta do, let me just copy this address because I might forget it copied and then we're going to go back to our settings here <gasps> security firewall rules advanced we're going to create a new rule and i'm going to call it a lan in we're going to have this tv tv uh to guest uh, -U -U guest and then i'm going to have now you can create a port group with this too if you wanted to make it easy i'll show you that after so what we're going to do is I'm gonna hit accept because I wanna allow it on and we're gonna do what network I want on. Let's just say the guest network. So we're gonna do a network. I'm gonna select a guest. Then I'm gonna do by IP address and I can do that here and I'm gonna allow it basically. So I'm gonna allow this going to the guest. So if I hit allow rule, we should see allow TV to guest. So I'm gonna move this up right underneath allow established doesn't matter as long as it's underneath one of these depending on if some people are particular about which rules go before but this is a basic network so it really doesn't matter so i'm going to have it uh tv to guess so now the tv that's on the iot network can be able to go to the guest network so that if they want to stream on the uh, guest network they can have access to that tv now so it's pretty cool or if it was a printer now what you can do too as in we can go back to profiles and we could just create a new profile and we could just call this, um, like if you want to really get down to it, streaming or just go TVs. So these could just, you can make it streaming, smart home stuff, TVs, whatever. We're going to do it under IP addresses. We're just going to put that one in here and add. And then we can just keep adding uh, whatever IP address. Let's just do another one. Uh, let's say the one at one eighty. I'll just pretend that's an IP address, whatever, of another streaming device you have. Because you know, if you um, on a small network, you can a lot of times do static IP addresses. When you get to the thousands and thousands, uh, it's kind of you need to hold logging and all this other stuff to be able to handle all your what's what. 
But for this, it's a small network. It's a home network. I know that this is gonna be a TV right here because we saw that under network devices under here. Uh, we'll just go to, I'll keep it there for now, hit add. So TVs, yep. We'll go to devices. As we can see, it's TV. I know it's a TV. That's a Samsung TV. And it's a static IP address because if it's not static, if the power goes out, then the address will change and then this rule won't apply anymore to that TV. So just this rule you got to worry about when you allow stuff into certain VLANs if you use the IP address rule. So now, if we go back to settings and we were to go to security, firewall rules, and we would go to, where's the loud guest to TV? You could just have, and we're gonna go port groups, and we're gonna go to TVs, and now it's just TV. So if we hit add, boom, it's there. So here's the cool thing, like I was saying before, you can just add and they'll apply. So let's go, if we go down to, back to profiles, TVs, and let's just pretend I'm adding another TV. Add and hit apply. Boom, that other TV's already added to that rule we just created to allow TV's to guess. So I don't have to keep going to that page. I was like, oh, new device, boom, add new TV here. Boom, we're good to go again. That's how cool it is. This thing is cool as heck. I hope this guy's helps you. Uh, oh, also too, I wanted to make sure, we gotta make sure that we block the UDM interfaces to themselves. So like this, Ben to UDM. Block guest to UDM, block IOT to UDM. You don't wanna block the guest to the uh, the default to UDM. You can't do that, you'll have problems here. So what we're gonna do for this one is like I said, land local, land local, block Ben to UDM. Boom, block it to UDM, drop. And then we're gonna hit network, the network we want, Ben for this one. And we're gonna hit um, those profile things again, block to UDM, block to SSH, and we're gonna hit apply and boom. And they're gonna be down here so you don't have to worry because there's gonna be no allow rules for here. And, and if you're crazy, do some other stuff. We're not doing anything else on local other than this. So this is all that's gonna be here. So don't worry about moving these around. Here's another one, IOT. We gotta block each individual VLAN to these. So land local, land local. And then we gotta do block to IOT to UDM, drop. Network, IOT, port group. Block to UDM, block to SSH. They should already be here because we created it. Like I said, the TVs is here too, but we're just using the block to UDM. And then we're gonna hit add until you've added all yours. I only had to add three because this has four networks as you can see here, one, two, three, four, but we're not blocking the, the default. So make sure you block all these ones with that block UDM. We want that rule because that'll make it where they can't access the UDM interface, which is freaking awesome. So yeah, uh, I hope this video helped you guys. You guys know I always make these videos for you guys. I hope you and your family are having a rock and rolling day. Peace out, and I'll catch you in the next video. Rock on. <laughs>